Actually, I'll just restart a recording and use that as like bonus uh, in the in the video. But all right, so this is the official start. What is up, yep. Mister Man? You said you were oh, spending my. your day resting or relaxing. Yep, just trying to take it easy on my back. Get ready to go on to do the next job tomorrow. Yeah, but uh, I just want to say thanks to everyone. I know it's it's going to be a couple weeks from this recording when this gets uploaded, but thanks everybody for getting us. 60 views within an, like within 24 hours on our uh, the realm slash underdorks like D&D drama your idea to go Uncle Sam with it was genius like you just well the way you, you didn't say Uncle Sam but you said like the I want you to pay for your imagination you, you recommended that being something or the theme of the thumbnail and I was like wait a minute and then I thought Uncle Sam with the Wizards of the Coast thing slapped on his face pointing at us it reminded me of a lot of old Medicare thumbnails from back in, like, pre-IBS days. Huh. I, yeah, it, it feels like that. Because he would talk about stuff like this and how he would do thumbnails if he's making fun of a company would be putting just a logo on top of, like, a, a face. You know, an iconic face to make it a meme. <laughs> yeah. I know it's kind of lame because, you know, you're not the you know, you don't make thumbnails. No, I don't. No, they work. Like that's yeah, what matters. This, I think obviously this, did a fucking job. I think <laughs> I found a method to right, our work. videos. Damn. Like, I didn't want to title our uh, our video like, you know, the meme, like the thumbnail. I want you to pay for your imagination. I didn't want to name the video that because it's like, what the fuck does that mean? No one's going to click on it because you know it doesn't make sense. Or if they click on it and like, oh, it's D and D, they'll click off. Even if they would be interested in the subject, it's. They thought it was one thing, it's something else, they're going to leave. So I was like, if I put all the information, lay our cards on the table in the title, Wizards of the Coast, to take D&D and resell mechanics and functions to you, or to players, or whatever I said, I felt like if I left the info in the title and then make the thumbnail the, the, the funny title I wanted to go with, I feel like, you know, the title gives you the information and the thumbnail says, hey, we're just going to go off our opinion. We're not going to feed you the information and break it down. We're just going to make fun of it and talk talk about it. I like it. Mm -hmm. Shall we get on to the show? Yes. All right. Sorry. I, I just fine. think it's a good achievement, and we. I know you like talking about work it. on it. We really ever get to if, text if, about it? Hey, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have you know the the thing turn out the way it did. Oh, I from the suggestion of the cool. subject to uh, you know pretty much the thumbnail. All right, anyways. So, Let's uh, just meet in the middle and say we both contributed equally. Yeah. So the for party today, finished the dungeon and now they're off into the world. Are we going to, you know, so, continue on with the story, or are we going to do a recap before the next part of their adventure starts? Recap time! Recap time! Recap, got my book open. Right. I've got the map up. I just want to blow through all of these sessions real quick. Shouldn't take too long. This is a good spot for anybody who wants to hop on board to hop on board because from this point on, everything's going to be current. All right, you want so, more details on what I talk about? Just go back to the beginning. I'm going to try to try to break these down into chapters too. So when I when we when this is uploaded, people can skim through. Since this is the recap, I, I'm going to try to up the production a little bit. So when you're describing episodes, uh, I think we did five. Then I asked questions. Also, like. When you say, uh, like, every two episodes, just let me know. So I could say, you know, chapter one, episodes one and two, or episodes one, two, and three. Like, I'm going to break those down into smaller chapters, but our questions would be uh, every five sessions that you recap, right? I like you... that. Yeah. I All think right, we so... talked about that last night. Yeah, Yesterday. So yes. Three points where we I will ask questions, and then there'll be, like, double that because, you know, well, double that in the timestamps because you're covering chapter to chapter. I just want to look at the time and mark it down for myself. So when I go back to edit, I can just go straight to five minutes and whatever seconds and bam, we're good. But anyways, okay. are, uh, so are you streaming uh, the yeah, map? I'm yeah, I'm streaming okay. the map right now. Yep. Because I have a video game on screen and, and I don't think people want to see that. All right. Uh, I'm unprepared, everybody. Sorry. It's a little bit earlier than we normally do it. My, my, my request, well, both of our requests, I said, hey, I'm open. What's up? All right, um, fuck. I want to kill myself. Yeah. All right, uh, I got to <laughs> pause.
pop I'll it. I'll just out. preface it while you while you grab that. I'll just preface it. So we're going all the way back to January eighteenth last year, and today is the nineteenth. So almost a year to the day since we started. Yeah. Uh, in fact, today is there's, fuck. That was close Tuesday to Tuesday. Anyway. Oh really? The same type of weather. Yeah. Almost the same. Uh, same Seriously. week. So this would have been the same week that we started last year. So we are the one year recap, essentially, is what this could be called. Hold on. Um, this is Perennia. When we first did this, there was no map that we displayed. Pretty new. Well, myself was super new. And uh, never thought of it for like, what, 13 episodes to do this? And then one day we were like, hey, why don't we just stream your screen? And I was like, fuck, yeah, we could do that. So that's what we're doing. Uh, if you look, the island that everything took place in is called Laysa now. We never had a name for the island before. It was just called Settlement Island. Uh, now that Andromeda is basically going to take over this island as the ruler uh, through some other stuff that I'll talk about next episode. Uh, this is where our adventure begins. This is Perennia in its state in 832 when our adventure begins. Three and a half years have passed in this one year that we've played in game time. Or one year in real time that we've played in game time. Uh, the world actually changes scape after this. I just wanted to show it as it is at this time. Now we'll go to Lisa. How oh, far fuck they annoying. Sorry, people. There we go. My Sorry, bad. I'm, I'm really Lisa. quiet because I'm just the adventure begins. Oh, it's all good. I got it. Our adventure begins here. The actual first session. A lot happens in this first session. To the point that I think we may have played one other before this that I didn't write down, but either way, I'm going to read verbatim what I wrote down in my session as I keep track every single session of a rough idea of what the hell we actually did. Gotcha. First session, January 18th, 2022. Introduction to the campaign. The group starts by investigating the old settlements they discover and the cases of the destruction of those settlements and the location of fertile and silver fertile land, which is over here, silver mine over here. They learn about the locathaths that more than likely went, and then they went to this settlement. This your player built settlements that we'll talk about next episode. Uh, they circumnavigate the entire island in 23 days. So they go all the way around. In these 23 days, um, they basically get the hint, and I write it down too. The resentment in the crew is noticed because they were supposed to settle by now and Andromeda had decisions that she was making as a character as we went through this and those decisions were affecting the morale of the crew. I did not tell the players about this, but basically Andromeda and Nathan, or not Nathan's, um, Matthews, Matthew, sorry, yeah, Matthews, were um, pissing off the crew by not going, but they also didn't know at this point too that half the crew were fucking pirates and that Withers was a rat. So they circumnavigate the island, get back to this failed settlement right here in the bottom right-hand corner. This is a pivotal part in the campaign. Uh, Brown could have saved Andromeda from her future fate. He had a choice to make, as his, his master, uh, by the name of Brown, found out what the pirate crew intended to do, and how they were going to murder everybody, and Withers was going to take over the whole venture. So the events moved quickly. Brown had a choice to go back to his master. Sorry, it was Brown that found out what they were going to do. And Brown could either go back to his master and let his master know what he found out, or he could have went straight to Andromeda and Nathan's and the rest of the guards and let them know what happened. And he chose to go to his master first. His master knew it was going to happen already because he'd been spying, because the reason that he had went there is because he was spying on his master. So his master found out that Withers <coughs> was a bad guy and that he was going to do something to Andromeda. Withers really sounds badly. like a bad guy name, sorry. Yep. And then uh, from there, he drugged poor Zverg and because he wanted to save him. He knew that something bad was going to happen and he wanted to be the hero for once because he had had a bad past, which we've never really gotten into yet. Uh, I have here, events move quickly with Zverg getting drugged by Brown to save him. Ten pirates from the following pirate ship assist Withers in killing the Northlanders and Matthew. In a standoff, they attempt to trick Withers, but he doesn't bite. Brown tries a heroic intervention, but takes a bolt through the head, dying instantly. Withers gets wary and allows the men uh, Andromeda whipped for grabbing her ass. He also allows the quartermaster to rape her as a reward and to ensure they don't conspire against him after Andromeda earns his respect. So essentially, Andromeda gets raped for her, her constant fucking 
standing up to Withers. Hey, can I point Withers, out, can, can we talk about this just for one second? Because this almost yep. kind of... Did, did we ever bring up, like, uh, I'm going to try to remember to cut this if you don't want it in, but didn't this almost break up the whole game, or not a whole game, yep. but almost cause Andromeda to leave? It would have, Andromeda, the Andromeda's player was actually quite upset by the experience. He felt very out of, which was the point, right? Yes. He had been just fucking running his mouth like the only woman on a pirate ship shouldn't, right? Yeah. And I was trying to go for gritty in this. And it actually ended up causing conflict IRL with him. And it was just because he doesn't like feeling that way with his characters. characters. Right. Well, he oh. wants, did you say he, uh, he even admitted that he kind of wants to be the hero. So that uh, he gets frustrated a little bit. Yep. But I was going for gritty and you don't fucking run your mouth when oh, you're dude. the only one on a ship full of evil men. It just doesn't work Dark for you. Dark fantasy, it bro. Work out for him. Yep. So anyway, that was a bit of a controversial thing, and yeah. we got through it. Everything was good. Uh, we all learned a lot about it, and I decided that there is such thing as too real. So I decided not to fucking do that anymore. So hey, I kind of to be honest, that was a real situation. It from <laughs> rated R down to like fucking PG or NC seventeen or something. The next fucking rating down, and uh, went on from there because it's about having a good time, not yeah. fucking staying up at night because you feel like a piece of shit. And I didn't want anyone to have that feeling. But anyway, in the past. From that point on, now this was just two sessions, but it took us several shows to talk about it. Uh, well, I was very now. new to recording too and getting everything yeah. going. That's the way it goes. So third session, setting up the actual settlement. So yes. everything went down here, but they set up the actual settlement right here in this hex. I'm going to leave the mouse cursor there in case the resolution is super good. That's where they set up the next one. Uh, two weeks later, after a small negotiation, the settlement is founded. Settlement is laid out in a grid pattern in a hey, small bay. With a I only screen. see the new uh, the new map on the screen. I don't see the world map. Yeah, it should be the Lisa map. If you see where my mouse cursor is on the hex grid, that's where they set up the settlement. Oh no, I'm saying like your mouse isn't appearing on my screen. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I see a red thing in the middle of this map, and then a little green thing. Oh, hold on, move your mouse in the middle of the map. Here. Oh, there, I see, I see your mouse see now. Okay. So this is this is an intentional map, right? Yeah. So this is All the right. overall island map, and if you see where that house is right now, I'm yeah. kind of put it right yeah. there. Your mouse disappeared, so there. for like a minute, I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, I can't okay. follow. What the fuck? <laughs> I know I yeah. was there, and I've been there. I recorded what happened. It's just it's been like a year, right? Or like three, two quarters of a year. I mean, two thirds of a year. This is only the third session in, so I know. So. Yeah, it's been like a so three weeks time. out of a year. So they search around. Um, they settle. They settle that area, and then they do projects until a point. Sorry, I'm going back here because these are all episodes. I'm just reading through my notes. This is when. All oh, right. So they have to go out looking for supplies because Andromeda hasn't been helping out as much as she could to make the settlement work. And for some reason that I don't have written down in great detail. But I have Descent to Morale. I do remember that I was using game mechanics that they could buy certain or try to build certain things to offset it. So they want to go for a whorehouse ASAP. Uh, they got sent out to get food while they were out. This is where they have the full first encounter with the wolves, where all the wolves stood along the hilltop. Oh, all yeah. In the their glowing eyes going way back. Yep. That's, That's that. So, so long again, I only want to be. Yeah, and I only want to be brief about this. So now we're on to the fourth session, 74 days into the campaign, the defense of the settlement. So, at this point on, it's zombie wolves that come at them. The zombie wolves come uh, at them from the south. The group runs because they realize they are vastly overwhelmed. They also realize that there's some sort of guiding force behind these zombies. Quick, the, uh, <clears throat> quick, the uh, fucking halfling with balls of steel. Yep. He likes to stay by himself behind and fuck with the spirit. Uh, during that, you get to see just how brave Quick's character is. I didn't understand why he did that at the time. He, it's because, in in all honesty, I well, he say told me in his interview back. why, but like, I was oh, like, why the fuck would he do that? But yeah, I'm then I'll leave it for the interview. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if you want to know about Quick's big balls, read about his fucking interview. <laughs> so from yeah, there, yeah. I have a picture of what they did for the settlement. So it's the old school uh, Roman one where they do a square, and then they've got quarter grids in each one, and then they were building buildings into each of those. So there were two ways in out, in and out. I allowed them to have like an A-team moment where they set up some special defenses. So Zverg set up a special funnel gate so that the zombie wolves would come in slowly. Then Shawl 
made Dude. some pit traps in front of the gate. Andromeda made some flip up barricades with spikes on them. That's all I got written down. I think it was just putting them through there. a choke point, well, having them build a choke point so they can funnel enemies in more manageably. So they can't be flanked, surrounded, or overcame. It's if their people, if their homie in front of them is dead and blocking their way, they can't get fucking through. At least, I th did you ca account for that? Like the amount of dead bodies hindering the other enemies from coming over the their allies sure did and i actually have the battle sheet in front of me right now it took the fourth and the fifth section and the sixth <laughs> so three sessions to do this Damn. battle uh i have the wolf body count of over 100. that's right and then i have the pirates as well they lost 13 pirates what's there 17 a forest rounds. creature too because if you remember quick the big bald fucker ran up there and <laughs> Slapped the spirit of the island and stole its ability to control undead, and he stole control of the wolves and took them over. So then there was about half of the wolves turned on the other wolves and they started killing each other. Uh, I'm just looking here. Yeah, they had uh, all the they had like firing lines of pirates, and it got down to the nitty gritty here. On the sixth session, this is all right. I'm just looking. So now, actually, every five sessions we want to ask questions. So go hard. Oh, uh, well, shit, let me... So, see, it's been so long, so it's hard for me to have questions. So, uh, have you... Uh, was this, wasn't there, like, a forest, like, treant, or some kind of mysterious creature of the forest that they had to deal with during this time, that's too? That's the spirit of the island. So, that's the spirit ah. of the island. If you'll remember, uh, they didn't get to see what it looked like for the longest time, because everything happened at night. Oh, yeah, this I was pictured a treant, that's why I said that. Yeah, because the treant is actually the the spirit of the island what is being oh! dealt with by the player characters is its agent so its agent okay. is a bunch of roots the roots look uh, like a humanoid form with a cloak on them nobody knew that it was actually not a person uh for a very long time because everything happened at night this is also the time when they had to run for a whole bunch and i was enjoying the fact that they didn't have to fight monsters they got to kind of fight themselves and try to stay ahead of the pack it was yeah. it was all a big rush i they genuinely enjoyed a camp. The first part. Yeah, it was so much fun. See, we're still so too here, early for me to ask like a lot of questions. Yeah, My thing enough. is, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, like, so for a quick explanation, what exactly put them in a situation where they had to fight undead wolves? Like, why were they out there in the wilderness? They were, uh, they were getting supplies and scouting. So That's they were right. looking for natural resources, getting supplies and scouting, and then a zombie wolf stumbles into their camp when they were with other pirates That's who right. they weren't sure they could trust. They ended up saving those pirates. Those pirates end up worshipping Andromeda because she brings them back from the dead almost. Uh, very good part. Again, See, listen to those episodes for it. Now my memory gets session. good. Yeah, my memory gets good around the, the time like they start trying to go at withers and then the war is gearing, you know, right before the war goes in effect when they're still, you know, when things are still peaceful and it's just them versus a shady organization. That's when well, my memory I'm, kicks in. I'm skipping all of the story part because I don't have that written down. That's the point of the podcast so that I can. Yeah, I would love, to remember. I would love so to have more story, there. story beats, but I also rather also have, you explaining from where they started to where they are now, so you can so they can understand the the, the adventure through Perennia they made to the point where Perennia is forever changed because of that huge war, and then okay. what's happening next? You know, so I I wanted to do a lot of different like covers, like one for the combat, one for their adventure, one for like the deep lore, but <laughs> that, that'll come with time. Anyway, sorry, continue. Go well, on to the sixth session. Uh, sixth session is when they realize they're going to be, uh, they have to get out of here. They're going to be overrun, if I recall correctly. Uh, it's something about an escape, and then we get to the seventh session. The group escapes after the zombie wolves and finds the Ark. They tow the ship back to the southwest settlement ruins. It's a 20-day journey. So, if uh, again, you'll recall that there was the pirate ship that followed them, and then the Ark, which was the ultimate settlement vehicle. Yeah. Uh, the Ark was taken away when Withers took over and parked away that where the cunt. player actually the players didn't really know where they were. And then the pirates were using the pirate ship to do supply runs. Um, they didn't get blown off course. It says, after arriving, they decide to wait for Nathan's, who they discover has been staying there. So this was Nathan's that everybody thought he was dead mm. when everybody got split up and everyone else was killed, so they found out he's alive. Shout out, they surmised, he surmised they saw a giant fire from the zombie wolf attack. 
So again, they set all these fires on the zombie wolf attack, and Nathan's knew it. So he came towards them in the time it took them to grab that boat. They decide to wait for him to get back. Andromeda lights the pirate boat on fire, creating another signal. They have three weeks to kill until Nathan's can get to them. So then he, Nathan's goes all the way across the fucking island to find that they've already left and gone to the opposite side of the island. So they were here, up in the right before, and now the player characters are down here. I should have a better icon. I just want to say I got my fucking teeth kicked in in Bright Memory Infinite, if anybody knows that game. Alright, so are you trying to load up a new map? Oh, you're just getting an asset. That's why I have a better icon. So they go back to this failed settlement, because that's where they actually wanted to set something up. And this mm -hmm. is when they need to survive now, because they've lost all their food, all the stuff was left back in that settlement. I, I want to point out, the party are, like, ha ha throughout time have been known to be rebuilders. Like, they take ruins, or they like to take places that are, like, just down, down and out, and then build them to glory. I've noticed that. That's like that's how they that's, they they don't purposely go out to do that. That's just who they are. And I just wanted to point that out. So they start over again, and you're not wrong. And they each have Wait, projects what the fuck to am do. I streaming? On Sorry, I, I need to close out my. Stream. So Sverig, Sverig's project is a salination set station, a smoking box, and a carrying box. Shaw's project is a trap, trapping and skinning station. Andromeda's project is a patch wall and rare wood. Uh, Quick decides to go and eat Nathan's halfway to help him find them easier. So he takes off to the west into the swamp all by himself because he's got balls like that. Hell after yeah. Making small, after making a small camp and making some helpful tools, they stay together to gather natural resources to stay alive. Uh, they do that. Uh, it looks like they, yeah, they just did a bunch of stuff around there. Get to the ninth session. Uh, after rescuing the kidnapped settlers from Lokathath, after pursuing... So yes, that's what happened. Um... They had, because remember, they escaped with a whole bunch of people, and then they get raided from the Lokathaths over here um, while they were out gathering resources, and some of them were behind. Uh, the settlers get kidnapped from the failed settlement that they rebuilt again and get taken towards the marsh. That's what happens. Sorry, uh, Quick didn't go into the marsh to get Nathan's at that point. I, I'm, I'm skipping ahead. Okay, um, okay. Anywho, I think he went and hunter-gathered to get food so that everybody else could do the projects. I think that's what he did. Anywho, I have a map here of the marsh and the fens, a copse of three trees, and it looks like they had a scrap with the Lokathaths that they tracked down and managed to get their own people back. They managed to bypass the captors and reason where they would cross. So it's an ambush. So they oh, ambushed yeah, all these right. Lokathaths. That's why I love these notes. This is great for me, too. Tenth hmm. session. This After is the rescuing perfect the recap. Settlers, yep. After rescuing the settlers, they return to the camp and decide to go back to Gadron's Hammer. So they're just... They're out. They're done. Like, they have nothing and they know it. Everybody wants to leave. So they're going to take the Ark back. And they're hopefully... I think their plan at that point was to ask for some sort of reward or something like that. Something along those lines. They had a plan. I just can't remember right now. So after four days at sea... What the hell? No, <laughs> what? Okay, so, I, so I skipped it. So in the 10th and 11th session, it looks like I didn't write down that... Uh, they did get back to Gadron's Hammer. When they get back to Gadron's Hammer is when they're about to be taken prisoner. Because remember, they left... I think they left Withers behind? Where is Withers? Yeah, they had to. I think Withers escaped. I Something thought they happened. left him behind. Because of the... It's like he, he, well, he did escape, I guess. They left him behind, but he also was like... He escaped. What the hell happened to Withers? Yeah, I can't remember what happened to Withers. Anywho, they get back to Gadron's Hammer, and they try to... They were going to be taken prisoner, and then Tree Topper's there. Tree Topper's from the Sanctuary, and mm, he tree uses... Tree Topper's an elf, right? Yeah, Tree Topper's the elf. He is the god of the forest. Yeah! And he, only he's mortal right now. In his last mortal form, he's like 300 years old. He's one oh. of the oldest NPCs that I have. He adventured with Lance a lot. I don't lot. think you pointed that yeah. out. Yeah. A long time ago, I did. Oh, uh, shit. All right, sorry. It's, 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 no, it's all good, man. It's less than 11 sessions, and there's so much to know. So after four days at sea, so what happened was they got back to Gadron's Hammer. They were going to be taken prisoner. Tree Topper intervenes, says, hey, they're coming with me. They leave all the settlers behind who are probably going to die, and they go with him instead. Uh, it says, after four days at sea, Tree Topper realizes they're being followed. They're hopelessly outmatched and over... Overtaken. As his last wish, Topper asked to spare the group who witnessed the ascension. They are then teleported to the closest shore. After one month of walking, they reached Berkshire, and from there they reached the sanctuary. So at this point, they're in their boat. 
Uh, Treetopper ascends to godhood, essentially, and as his last act, he tries to save the player characters. This was just me doing some fun Deus Am, like, just me fun DMing stuff yeah. to get them, because they had a choice to choose who which side they were going to go into the war on, because there's been rumors for a long time that Galdrim was going to try to conquer the entire world with the help That's of Sword. That's right, I was excited, but like, oh, politics time. Yeah, exactly. So they get to the sanctuary. They choose the sanctuary to be their side. So in choosing mm -hmm. them, they get Tree Topper to help them. I think it was didn't, just I, a... didn't I pick that? Or you gave? Didn't you uh, give me like a selection of things? Or was that who the the enemy was going to be? I you chose who was going to do. The, you chose the actual. Yeah, I forgot about that. We should talk about it. you chose what was going to happen. I gave you three choices as to what the world event was going to be, and you yeah. chose the invasion one. I kind of suggested so, how they did the war, where they take over one place more politically and financially and then another place by force just to you know because they have that might and wanted to show all their power so and they I... to start doing oh, yeah so they're up to start doing sabotage missions for the sanctuary i'm on 12th session now okay the pcs are sent on a sabotage mission against the closest embargo so now we get to switch maps We're back to Perini at large. This is an updated map, so I'm just going to zoom into it. So these were actually there at the time. These were the three cities that the sanctuary had, and this was the location of the sanctuary capital. This is where everything is going down. I'm going to zoom into that area now to make it easier. So this ruin, this ruin, and this ruin. Um, the sanctuary itself is there. PCs are sent on a sabotage mission. So what the member Prin or uh, Geldrin had a giant navy, and this navy had an embargo picket across this whole bay. Yeah, that's and right. Each of the ships were about sixteen miles apart or something like that. I remember I, had I was the worried about the embargo. Out. Yeah, so the embargo was the only way they could go at the sanctuary because they knew the sanctuary was quite powerful, and they didn't. They declared war on the sanctuary, but all they wanted was uh, concessions. So yes. with that in mind. That's what they do. They want to start sabotaging. This is where Andromeda starts getting the idea to have a U-boat. That's essentially what they have. That's the right. I was so excited wanna... about that because I thought it was smart how you implemented it. Thank you. So, 12th session. The PCs are sent on a sabotage mission against the closest embargo. The mission is to poison the officer's food supply. The embargoes consist of 13 Galdrin Man of Wars. The main target is What the is the Man of War? Man of War is like their giant, giant ship. Uh, the command ship, and the goal is to get in and out un unmolested. The infiltrators oh, yeah, are right, yeah. the sanctuary CIA. So yes, they become the infiltrators. That's the name of their little unit when they choose uh, sanctuary. Oh yeah, they do Rainbow Six Siege shit. And I was yeah. so excited. Uh, I think it was Quick that talked about it in his interview. That's coming and I have here. The mission went off without a hitch. That's all I have written. <laughs> and I, I have we a to What's detailed? I of the very first picture I ever drew of what these ships would look like. So that's cool for me to see. Next up, 13th session, Operation Swing and Dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. We're <laughs> now, now as characters 232 days and two weeks into the session. Uh, the aggressor is Sanctuary. Oh, so now I'm basically laying out the uh, war in the sense of an operation. So I have here the aggressor is the sanctuary. The participants are the PCs and two reclaimers, forty mutants, three dragons, one prototype submersible. So this is when they invade the Man of War command ship and actually invade it with all of the sanctuary with them. So this carries over to fourteenth session. They have an attack plan of an underwater insertion. They do cold water checks because the water's freezing, and um, they could take damage or freeze up. I've got uh, what they've got for bonus. So yeah, so I remember how I did this. So basically kind of gave everything a modifier and rolled off each turn to see how the battle would swing. Mm -hmm. And then depending on how the PCs did, it would swing more their way. So I've got some ratios here and some basic notes on how the characters helped out in the battle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, carries over to the 15th session. So this was, yeah, this was a whole bunch of, uh, I think this was a few sessions in a row for like... Um, for us on the podcast it took us a while to explain all of this i think it was three or four sessions we had a lot of like extra meetings too where like you asked for my input because like I, this is when we did like i did the big old content change this is before the maps though but this is gearing up to you saying fuck it let's do maps 
Yep. Yeah, so we was going through a lot of uh, in prog progress, increase in production, I guess. As well as uh, in the storyline. Because we were meeting about that, too. So on the 14th session, the ship was ambushed by three dragons on the artillery angle. The group fought the wizard and managed to kidnap the ship's captain. So that was what that was. They sink the ship and escape in the submersible. The 15th session. The session opens with King Ash divvying out his army for a move. The evacuation of his settlements played out. So this is when they had to delay. They had to go to this settlement first, alert everybody, and move all of the settlers at once down this road. They were getting shelled by them, if you remember too. So they shelled the town. Then the group waited. Wait, how do you the shell town a town? town. With the trebuchet? Well, not shelled. Um, trebucheted it, sorry. Oh, well, that's still shelling. Just using it. military turn. You're but you're right. The artillery, they artilleried the town, and all of the artillery stones that's pretty were special gnarly. stones. And they went and they destroyed all the special stones that they had so that they didn't have the best uh, shot anymore. I'm trying to remember what the fuck the word is. For I want to point out, I was like real clueless during the start of this war because I was like forgetting everything, not remembering. And I remember the war just like also being my favorite part because like I if the way you describe things is I ask for like more like scenic details, more like interactions, like you know more deep interactions that don't amount to much but still add value to the character. And like I, I just picture like at times at nighttime being on a ship watching your sky light up because you see giant flaming arches because of trebuchets. That's what I'm picturing. And I like the way you described it at the time. So they shell the town. The groups all destroy the missiles that they shoot. And then when they do that, the landing boats come to shore. There is a battle that is the 16th session where they jump the three landing boats. And this is their first major battle on foot in a while. They do quite well. Uh, they kill quite a few squads. Quick goes off on his own, roasts some guys, does quite well. Uh, I've got all of this. 16th session. The group sabotages three of the landing craft. They run after they run after the settlers after that who they already sent down the road to Nudian. They run through the night and arrive at the camp. They then sleep eight hours for spells and catch up to the settlers. The PCs also learn that a ship lies ahead and one to following. So along this this river here, the ships were still able to go up it a little ways, and they were trying to shell them from the shore and cut them off before they get to this bridge. So that's what they're racing against. I have a small map here showing the. the I like that city on the peninsula. I like it too. I, 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 I just want to say, I've said it a lot when you first introduced maps, but I fucking love these maps, dude. It really feels like old RPG, old you, stuff that we would see when we were looking up like historical stuff relating to fantasy. Thank you. I love them. So 17th session is the continuation of that where they now they, they bail out. So they decide to go this way towards the lake instead, further away from where these guys would come. Uh, they use some spells to fool the guys that are on the road. I've got some a battle here. Right, so as they were running, the the Geldra Knights sent the fastest things that they had. I can't remember exactly what they were. Uh, I don't have it written down. But basically, there's a little fight for them to hold off the only people that saw where they ran to. So then the people are able to, to go all the way over here. They find a place to ford across, and then they go back to the sanctuary. Uh, 19th session. They have been now adventuring. Okay, so yeah. The group... Group levels to 6th and gets flown to Kirill. From here, they split up to do the recon in Fangorn and Northern Kingdoms. So this is where they learn the state of the war in the rest of the world. Uh, Fangorn pair. The yeah, Andromeda goes on a religious pilgrimage all the way back to Fangorn. They're followed by... Yeah, so they go to Kirill. So in the city of Kirill, where everything went down. That would be Free State. The biggest trading city that there is. Oh my fuck! Sorry, I, I got cheated into a corner by a boss. Fucking three-headed cunt. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, dude, this city looks way better than the first map of the city. Did you yeah, remaster this? this? No, this is the first city that I did with the new way that I did cities. I had a lot of fun building. I don't the recall cities. you yeah, using yeah. this at the time, so that's why I was asking. No, we didn't have the maps yet. 
Yeah. Or maybe we did. No, this was the first map, I think, because I got to zoom in. Yeah, because we were in the city when you started using them. Yeah. So, yeah, this was the gate where they had to get through, and then they were followed by a Galdrin agent. Yeah. Uh, Quick and Shaw see the tail, and they try to help. Uh, 19th session is the group learns about the Fangorn War, and Darius joins his sister. So this is where Andromeda gets her brother, who is a shape changer. Yeah. The Northerners learn. So then, so on the world map, this would be Kirill, where that whole adventure takes place, and now people get to actually see it. I fucking think that's awesome. So one group goes. This is where Kirill is, right here. Can you see my mouse cursor circling? Yes, right there yep. on the peninsula on the right. Correct. So from here, Andromeda and Zver go south. They follow the longest road in the world, which is actually a magical road that stretches all the way down to this lake. When they go there, they get to see their pieces of property because at the beginning of the game, they got to select their legacies. They both selected monetary legacies. They had properties and houses to check on and basically just check their country out. They learned that the druids have taken over and they are consorting with demons and hack yeah. sacrificing human babies to gain power. Uh, the most evil, vile shit. Um, they get to see a on giant brand tree. Form, to be honest. Yeah, and there is a rebellion that's being funded by Galdrin, who's actually funding the good guys in this because the druids are technically the bad guys, but they're the established government, so technically these are rebels. Uh, the rebellion is crushed by the treants and the sorceress druids. Uh, that's where Darius comes in. That's why he leaves, is because he loses. Because at this point, they have to choose who they're going to stay with, they or who they want to go with next in the yes. war. They choose to go with the Watch. <laughs> so they didn't actually choose to help the Empire of Fangorn. If they'd have chose to help it next, they'd have had an uphill battle and they realized it. Because that's what this was, was intelligence to see which, which side they wanted to help next. So after that, they learn that the war is not going well for Galdrin. They they also learn that the uh, Sanctuary has taken the submersibles of Andromeda's and really put a hurting on it. Also remember that, right, they just escaped. Withers was left behind to keep this going. So Withers gets rescued and taken back to Galdrin, and he keeps his pirate bay going. Because he wants to rob his own warships with his pirate armada to enrich himself off of the war. Like a good old profiteer. The yeah. group decides to help the Northlands for phase two. I have that big giant letters. On to 20th sessions. So we're halfway there. Not bad. We've been talking about half hour, so this should be an hour. The group decides to go straight to King's Hold. Now we're going to King's Hold and Watchtower. So this is our overland map. King's Hold down there. King's Hold is where the majority of this ah, portion of the adventure happens. Fist me, bitch! Sorry. I don't mean to be yelling at you like that. I apologize, everybody. I'm genuinely getting pissed. <laughs> I think of, like, people losing the Dark Souls bosses. This is, like, an FPS setup with, like, boss fights like Dark Souls bosses. Where you gotta learn their movements, their attack. You gotta learn how to dodge, block, use your special shit. It's a shooter, though. It's pretty sick. I love your maps, though. I love how they're just... I, the water is different. I don't really like that. But at the same time, it, it, it fits with the aesthetic. More so than it did before. We use this map for probably the next 10 sessions. Yes, we don't I, I remember it. this one. Because yeah. so this, this is also is... the map you use after the war is over. Before the dungeon. Yes, this is where yeah they do it before the dungeon, when they grow and all that. So the group decides to go straight to King's Hold. I have the random encounters because now they have their own submersible. And they're cruising around. They get a free submersible from the sanctuary to say thank you for helping them in the first point. So this is the first time they get to use it. They cruise there in secret, so no one here knows they're there. First day they're there, they do some recon. They find documents detailing how Galdrin is stealing from the watch supplies. So this is when they discover, too, that the watch has been seriously depleted and basically isn't even working anymore. Uh, day two, they explore and they find that escape tunnel that goes between the High Protector's Manor and the outside docks. 21st session. Quick hunts and scouts. Andromeda observes... Zverg and Shaw sneak into the escape tunnel to check the escape hatch machinery. Day 4 happens. Andromeda observes and sees Nathan's Inspire men. So they do realize that Nathan's is still alive. Yeah. Day 5, they... Zverg sends Shaw to find the proper wood for the crank because they're going to try to open it. Day 6 is a snowstorm because the weather's awesome. Day 7, they break in and discover Nathan's has been possessed by a Galdrin wizard. 22nd session. Day 8 that they're there. Uh, the group sleeps all day to be aware at night. While they prepare to be fresh at night while they prepare. This is when the zombies 
and the very first wave of ghasts and vampires and everything start to invade. At first, they were going to run down here, try to go across here, and sneak into the high protectors. They realize that they have to help. So their original plan was they attacked from this point. They made a treant druid, or sorry, a treant illusion to pretend that it was the Galdranites helping instead of them because they were trying to remain secret. Uh, Sean, this is when Shaw was a fucking boss and he climbs to the top of this tower. Oh, he's, he's not now. Part. Yeah, even a bigger boss, but this was his moment. <laughs> I know, I know. His battle. That's when he one shotted that fucking vampire. That's the right! Top. And I Shaw still killed didn't believe vampire it. by leaping off the tower and crushing its head. A 26 hit point swing of the war hammer. Boom, crushes him. He names his fucking hammer after that Mr. <laughs> oh, he named it. Oh, that's pretty cool. For Mr. Like for like making the head into mist. Yeah. So, uh, oh, that is such yeah. a good pun. And then uh, Shaw also kills the gas and the wraith. So that was a hell of a battle for him. 23rd session. The battle winds down, and Shaw makes a speech on the watch to the bridge, shaming them. The group learns yeah. that Withers' personal watch has arrived and is hot on their trail. The Withers' personal people are there, trying to find them. The group heads back to base. Day 9, Andromeda watches the castle and makes contact with her brother. Day 10, the group plans to break in and steal comatose Nathans, then escape in the sub. Then they wish to sink the, hand sh the hound ship. Now this is where a bit of IRL drama happened too, because I was using... Andromeda's uh, cohort from the leadership feat as a plot device, and he didn't really appreciate it, but I wanted to tell a story, and yeah. I didn't see the harm because I never had any intention of killing his brother because his brother's a fucking beast. So I wasn't worried about it, but either way, a little bit of that happened, but nothing major. Uh, they rescued Nathans after realizing he needed different spells because they didn't have the means to do it themselves. After finding and dispelling a magic trap, they grabbed the comatose Nathans and retreat. Once to the docks, they realize the submersible isn't there. Andromeda turns into an owl and sees her brother Darius tied up on a docked ship. After finding the submersible, they move in on the Galdrin warship. Ferg makes a dark bridge between the two ships. They then learn that Withers, main hunter for Andromeda, wants to find er, wants her. Andromeda stays on the submersible while the rest while the rest of them go at Darius. So uh, Andromeda's player was very upset to the point that he didn't want to help in the battle. He was going to stay on his boat. So he stays on the submersible and the rest rescue Darius. Um, we made it more of a she stays on the boat to stay with Nathan's in his last moments because this is where Nathan's dies. Mm -hmm. And he's been a staple of the group for the 23 sessions. You know, they are no, I, I was going to say, I didn't need you to stop for anything because I don't have any questions. You explained everything that I was going to ask. All the, even all so, the small shit. So then they find out that uh, the speech of... Uh, Shaw's shamed the people enough that they decide to fight back. So they discover that half the people on the boat that they thought were bad guys were actually good guys. And those good guys switch sides. So then there's a pitched battle on the ship. The group beats the Galdrin crew and takes control of the ship. King Ash flies in and portals his sanctuarians to help with take the castle back. So this is the part where King Ash sends his people. He also reveals that he's lost the war and he throws in the towel for the sanctuary. Um, and in yeah. part of that deal is he is personally not allowed to attack Galgen soldiers anymore. <coughs> he technically just. Hey, hey uh, stop, 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 stop. Uh, hey, I lost internet. So Nathan's died. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold uh, on. Oh. Can you go back three sentences? He had to do what? He had to personally surrender it, in Sanctuary, and then that's when you cut out. It, uh, and he's not allowed to take part in killing anybody in a war, so he asked for volunteers who don't have. Basically, he asks for volunteers in an army. You know, it's like a one-way uh, mission. That's a way you around. That's them. smart. Yeah, but they know that it's important to take back the watch so that they can prevent, protect the one. Oh, like, everybody sure. else understands how important the watch is. So that's what it was. But I have here the... Hey, guys, three if, guys, if you're listening to this recap and you're not caught up with this part of the story, or you didn't listen to this specific, specific episode, think of the watch as... Uh, Game of Thrones Night Watch, except their purpose isn't like, yeah, their purpose is to fight the undead, but they're not like icy or anything. It's it's different, but it's that kind of theme. Just think of those type of people. They're comparable. Definitely comparable. Yeah. I don't take credit for everything being hundred percent original. Oh yeah, well, yeah, I'm just saying it's like forty <laughs> percent similar if you get the concept at least. Yeah, exactly. So twenty sixth session. After infiltrating the high protector's house for the last time. They cast Invisibility Sphere and head into the courtyard. So again, they use their secret route to get into here, only now it's been taken over by Galdrin soldiers, and they're trying to get it back. Uh, 
I have the pitched battle again. This is where I had modifiers on each side, and then however well the characters did is how well the battle went. After stopping the soldiers fighting, the group discounts that a vast horde is on, or discovers that a vast horde is on the way, and they gain two get two days to prepare. Again, they get to do a little bit of a team preparing. It's very class. It's cast pretty dope when they get time to prepare and time to do. interact. It, it's always my favorite shit. Andromeda is making ammo, so plus fifty percent to ammo. Shaw holds a games to improve morale. Quick does some prime scouting and learns that the number is actually more than what they anticipated. And Xander sets traps out in the field. So this is where uh, Xander joins the team. That's right. Yeah, he's only been in like three episodes so far. Yeah, and he's going to be interviewed soon enough. Yes. Yeah, I didn't realize Xander stopped that one. So I basically saw this he's guy. He's only been in five sessions. Well, five. Been a while. He'd only be in he... five or six videos. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah, that's fine. I was just saying, he was an IRL buddy of mine, and I hadn't seen him in a while. Saw him on a job site, I was like, fuck, I miss this guy. I needed a fifth person because yeah, dude, that's awesome. um, Andromeda was a little bit wishy-washy on whether he wanted to stay. And was that like, is oh, right. I forgot the second yeah. drama. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was still a continuation of that one. And again, I, I say drama lightly. It was just like... Well, yeah, I in, in the lightest form. It was just a disagreement. Anyway, 26 session continued. Uh... Looks like they started killing stuff. The PCs bravely stand on the bridge as the castle garrison opens fire at the horse. So yeah, this is where they hold the bridge. After the prepared onslaught, the group... Oh, right, yeah. So also keep in mind that this is where Andromeda ascends. Uh, Andromeda becomes an uh, avatar of her god almost, gains a bunch of stat bonuses. What she doesn't realize is uh, Withers also got his stat bonuses from the god that she didn't choose. They go into the shrine of all gods, and they have to desecrate it, or sorry, uh, remove the desecration. So yeah, I was gonna have... say Xander wouldn't do that shit. No. So they head towards the temple to battle a defacer and its bodyguards. So I have a just an interior picture. What of the is a defacer, by the way? So the defacer is um, it's got no face, and when it attacks you and hits, it steals your face. It's literally a defacer. It's in the name, a punny name. So it was the one that defaced. I just like the name, and I was like, well, it defaced the temple, so I'll try to have them fight it. It was a pretty decent fight. The battle is with the defacer and some shadow mastiffs. Uh, actually, I do have the map for this. I keep forgetting I have certain maps. Uh, temple to the all gods. I'll take any map you got, so I don't have to put anything else in its place. Okay, so now we're inside of this temple. Fuck! Everywhere was overrun, and they had to get into this temple. So this is the remainder. Yeah, of that this temple. is after the war, and this, well, it's not, technically the no, end of the war, but it's, it's phase two. No, this is still phase two, where they're trying to take back because they chose to help the King's Watch. So this is that's them right. They got to do help. that. Then, so like then that. the undead fight after the so war. So this is all desecrated. I'm not going to explain this in detail because I already did in the episode. But this is the map that it takes place in. They fight a hill giant vampire. Um, and it was quite a battle. It lasted 25 rounds. Jesus Christ. Jesus. 25 rounds of prep. It went all the way to 30 sessions. Woo! About three sessions. Yeah, 20, 29, 30. Damn, son. 30th session, big-ass battle continued to the 31st session. Now, uh, this is about the vote. So they win the battle, and the day is good. From there, they head back to King's Hold, and they've won phase two. They now have, this is the part where all of the other rulers arrive to elect a new Night's Watch commander. After the battle, the group waits three days for the... Between go out... Three days... Fuck, can't read my own writing. To go out and about. <laughs> the high protector, yeah. High pro King Ash arrives. Yeah, so this is when all the rulers arrive. Uh, they do the vote. This is when the group eavesdrops on the proceedings. They learn that the council is split, with each country voting for itself, except Galdrin, who votes for the Sanctuary. Because Geldrin wants the Sanctuary wiped out completely. They know that King Ash won't back down, so they figure that they can wipe him out once and for all. This is also where they discover that Withers is also now an avatar to a god. It's the first time Andromeda has seen him since the, uh, the oh, like, since uh, the fucking wolves. Like, it's been two and a half years. Why are you cut out? Drives on those 100. You said it's been, hold on, hold on, hold on, you're cut out, you're cut out, if you can hear me. New under. Lord Commander Jarbinder. Hey, can you hear me now? We bird. cut out. No balls. Okay, when we cut out. You cut out right after you say something. Two years? Uh, it's been two years since Andromeda's seen Withers. 
So right, this is their go. first time they stare down. They both realize that they are post war uh, avatars of gods. Yeah, this is post war now. This is where they're voting for it. Phase right. two is over. The war is over. Galdrin's won the war, and they're about to elect the new Night's Watch commander. Uh, Lord Galdrin, Commander Trabender. Wait, didn't Galdrin is, lose the war? Nope, Galdrin won the war. They won the war. They get to keep the north. They lost King's Hold. I thought for sure. They lost and, Sanctuary and, also. No, Sanctuary lost horribly. They had to pay huge reparations right. to King Ash. I don't know why I thought the other way around. I had that. I, I don't know. Excuse me. Right. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Adam. Vape. Oh, good. I got. I got my vape. So the group meets the new commander. The group wins the battle of the patches where the sword soldiers. The commander wishes to change. Right. So there's a bunch of politics that happen that I explain in the actual episode. From there, the group sneak to the wards of the Temple of the All Gods. And this is where they decide to. I gave them a chance to do a dungeon before they wanted to, and it was the first dungeon they've actually ever done in the whole game. So now we're getting to more recent episodes. For fuck's sakes, I gotta fix all my goddamn like. Yeah, you good. Do what you need to do, player. So this was the first dungeon that they ever did. Thirty uh, third session. Now inside the temple, the group sneaks down into the crypts. So this is the crypts. This is where this is the bone, the bone theme. Thirty fourth session. The group presses on, and accidentally splits up. So this is where Xander almost dies. Uh, after a harrowing battle, the t then we're on the thirty fifth session. After a harrowing battle, the team ends up clearing two rooms while split up. So Xander nearly dies here, and they spend sixteen hours resting. So they have a bad battle with the specters, and they get jumped from both sides. 36th session is a continuation of the dungeon. 37th session is the finale where they kill the Bone Devil here and they have a battle with the three-headed skeleton the thing there. The Bone Devil sounds so fucking cool. Yeah, that was a good battle. And a vi uh, all the battles in this gun. I really enjoyed this dungeon. Oh, yeah. Post-war has been really cool. Yes, so far. Freedom. The group dispels the desecration as reinforcements arrive. Castle Pot Guy is retaken and the day is won. From here, the group heads to the sanctuary via a ship. So from here, we just go to 38th session. Uh, they just basically made magic items and did a whole bunch of traveling to get back to Andromeda's house because she wants to build another mini arc so that they can settle Lassa. Because they decide, because I'm like, you're free now. What do you guys want to do? We want to settle Lassa and we want to finish what we started. So almost a year to the day, we are now back to the island where they are settling it. I'll go back to that one last one because now we're on the 39th session. The group reaches the island of Lhasa. They decide how to tackle the objectives. I wrote four objectives down on our whiteboard. Uh, they wanted to figure out what the old, what happened to the old settlement because they left it behind. They needed to deal with the spirit. They needed to establish their very first settlement location. And I can't remember what the fourth one is off the top of my head. I think it was something to do with scouting. Anywho, they do all of that stuff. They set the Lassa, and that's where we're at currently. So that is 39 and 40 sessions. Hell yeah. The last two sessions has been us doing the the game mechanics involved in getting the settlements going. If you've ever played Civilization VI or Age of Empires, they basically get their own little town. I have made some custom rules. I can't wait for this. Buildings, and they've basically gone around and found resources to exploit. So now they're going to make cities... And I have grids set up so that we can place all the resources. And basically this week, I'm going to sit down and make each of their settlements, print them all off. Now it's going to be uh, each settlement will have threats that can happen so that they have stuff to do. They can also explore the island. I have a few dungeons divvied out. And they have all sorts of stuff that they discovered in the first few sessions that they got chased off the island before they could figure anything about. And that's it because I've talked a lot and my voice is sore. Of <laughs> You're good, bro. That was a very uh, quick recap compared to all the small details, everything that's happened. But yep. it's been a fun adventure, story. and we still got like a lot of uh, a few a few episodes that actually contain like a lot of like lore and detail. This was just for a quick where they started, what they basically did the session, and where they're at now. If you want actual specific details, you're just gonna have to watch the playlist and. I'm starting to put the playlist at the end of the videos. Very nice. Yeah, so people and can click on that. And then uh, instead of featuring the last episode, I feature one of my other videos and then our playlist. Just because you might as well get the whole playlist. If you're going to watch one, you should watch. Well, listen to one, you're going to listen to the other ones. 
Okay, and I think we should stop it here. Yeah. That way it actually is a quick recap, if you don't mind. Oh, no problem. Uh, well, I'm going to wait. It's 35, 36, 37. I'm going to stop at 40 seconds, you know. Now.